In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can set up an online asset for free using system.io. The asset that you're going to create today is a blog. It is an asset that you will be able to sell going forward. Hi, I'm Brendan. If you're interested in creating online assets and ones that can generate a passive income for you, then blogging is definitely an asset that you want to invest in. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a blog post using system.io. So head over to system.io. I will have a link in the description below that you can go and use. It is an affiliated link and any commissions that I earn through you using that particular link help go towards funding the content of this particular channel. So having a look through the various plans that are available to you, there is a free plan which gets you up and running immediately at absolutely zero cost. Um, in there, because we're going to be looking at creating blogs, you'll be able to create your first blog for free and you will be able to create unlimited number of posts within that blog as well. Over and above that, there are a whole host, host of other functionality that is also included with the free plan. So go ahead and sign up today. If you already have an account, head over and sign in now. Once you've signed in, on the top menu, head over to blogs. Once in blogs, just head over to create a blog. Give your blog a name for today's demonstration. I'm going to call it my own. I'm going to label this by my own name. Your blog domain by default, when you signed up, you will have a user account domain. If you want to set up a custom domain for your particular blog, and I recommend you doing this, go and watch my video on how to purchase a domain name using Namecheap. And I have a second video on how you can link your domain name from Namecheap all the way through to system.io. Right, so for now, for, I'm going to leave it as my default domain that has been assigned to me from by system.io. The path over here, you have an option to add a directory after the actual domain. I recommend that you leave it as is so that your home page is your default directory. So in this case, if I had a custom domain here that was brandonskeen.com, it would just be brandonskeen.com and my home page would land on that particular URL. Scrolling down, there are a number of templates that are available for you to select from. So having a look, you can then pick one that suits your interest or your niche that you are going to be creating your blog for. If you hover over the particular template, there is a preview option. You go and select that. It will then open and you, you can then have a closer look at what that particular template will look like. So if that layout and that template is something that suits you, you would then go and select that particular template. So for my case, what I'll do is over here, I'm going to come in through and select that particular one and head all the way down to the bottom and select create. You will now see that your blog has actually been created. There was the title that I gave it, Brandon Skeen in this particular case. You can see that my home URL is my default URL, which was assigned there. If you have a custom domain, as I mentioned previously, and you've already set one up and you changed it to that, it would then be displayed over here. So head over to title of your blog, select that. Based upon your template that you selected, there may be differentiation between what you see on this template, as in the number of blog posts here, I have nine that have already been pre-populated for me as part of my template. And the pages section, I also have eight pages. There we can see this is my home page, and this will be the page that we'll start editing. And I'll show you how to use the editor shortly. And then you have the various categories that are allocated to this template as well. And over here, you can see that four categories have already been pre-populated and you will be able to change those to whatever categories that it is that are pertinent to your particular blog post. Heading back to posts, there's some groundwork that we just need to configure initially so that the template is applied to all posts that you create at a, at a later stage. If you head over to blog settings and over here, you could come and change your blog domain, your URL path and your language if you so required. The blog layout contains settings that apply to the border, to the um, the menu at the top of your page, as well as to the footer of your of your page. In here, there are certain items that you're going to want to edit. And let us start. And the first thing that you see over here, there are certain items that are for desktop only, but is determined by this button. If you want to see what your blog post looks like on a mobile device, select the mo mobile icon. 
the display will now change to that of a mobile device. Here you can see the logo is still apparent over here, but our Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest icons at the top have been removed. The menu is now a hamburger menu as opposed to the fully displayed menu. And below that is the remainder of the template. So if you scroll down, you'll see that the, the footer is then condensed and stylized to fit on a mobile device. And if we head back to desktop version, you'll see that the layout is now expanded again. So let's head up to the top and let's show you how easy it is to edit this template and make it your own. First thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna go and insert a, a logo for this particular blog post. Once you've selected it on the left-hand side, you'll see on the left-hand side, there's an image file. You, you can either delete it and you can see there it immediately changes and then upload, or you could just go and select and upload that particular image. So over here, we'll, over here, I'll just go to my images and I will select that as my logo and I'll put that in there. And from here, we are also able to come and resize that. As you can see, that image now is fairly large by default. And let's condense that a little bit until you get a size that you are, you are comfortable with. I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. Next, let's go and edit some of these social media icons that are up here on, that are, that are here on the left. Some of them will be easy to access, others will be a little bit more difficult to get through to. As soon as you mouse over a particular row, you can see that there are two various colors that are displayed. If you wanna select the settings for the particular row, in this case, it is gonna be four columns in this row that contain the Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter logos. You would then head over there and select the settings and then that particular row is now active and you can come and change the settings in there, how high it is from the, the top of the page, um, the background color, etc. But if you wanna access the actual individual items within that particular section, then you're gonna want, then you will need to select the actual individual items and icons in this particular case, and then you'll see the color of that actually changes through to orange. Now, the, the challenge is once you get near the end over here, say we wanted to edit the Facebook icon so that we can get, so that when people click on that, they're going through to our Facebook page. You see the only option that you get here is the bin option, and that is to actually delete that icon, which is what, which is not what we want at this stage. So I go ahead and select cancel. Over here, you see there's a tab that if we go and double click on that, let me just get it in the right spot, you'll see that it collapses the left-hand side menu. And if I head over the Facebook icon now, and I head over to the settings, little cog wheel, you'll see over that then activates that particular icon. So you head over here where the hashtag is, and you come and enter your URL that you want to send people to. And if there were any other changes that you wish to make to that particular icon, you could then scroll through here and make the make those particular settings. And once done, you can either just select off of the image and those changes will have been applied. If I head over to say, I don't have a Pinterest account, I go and say delete and I'll remove that. There's a little bit of a gap and I say, I don't have a Twitter one either. I'll go and remove that as well. And then I'll only have the two icons that are left there. I would then go and do the same thing for the Instagram icon and go and link that to my Instagram page. As you can see over here, this will only appear on, let me just click off of there. It will only appear on the desktop. If I wanted to change that particular setting, I go and select that, that row. Once again, it'll be highlighted in blue. Select the settings for it. And on the left-hand side, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see here that the item is only visible on desktop. That's why it appears there as desktop only. If I wanted to include that on my mobile, you'll see that then removes the desktop only notification that appears on that particular row. And this will now appear on my on mobile devices as well. If I wanted to go and have a look and see what, how that would appear, I go and select the mobile device in the bottom right-hand corner. And there you can see that the Facebook and the Instagram logos are stacked one above the other. And say I didn't like the fact that these two icons are stacked one above the other. If I head up in the menu, I have the option to disable vertic vertically stacking rows on mobile devices, 
go and select that and you can immediately say you can immediately see what impact that will have on a mobile device which will then look somewhat better once you're happy with that particular layout you can head back to your desktop so the next item that we're going to come and edit will be our menu so what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to remove the articles link in the home in the in the menu so once again i come and select that and on the left hand side here you can see that this is the menu items the first one is home we'll we'll retain that as well as contact here's the articles one all i need to do is go and select delete and now i only have three items that are in my menu once again if you wanted to change the spacing between them now because you had one less you can then increase the space on that and we'll say we'll leave it at 89 there if you wanted to increase the font size of those particular menu options um, if we head back down and put it uh, let's say back to where it was around about 16 and line height you can come and play around with any of those particular settings you could also change the fonts so once you're happy with the particular settings for the menu you would then you just need to click off of anywhere else on on the page the block content over here you will want to retain so whatever content that you then go and create going forward this is where it will be located it will have this header which will sit above your content and then below that it will have these popular posts and once again these are all customizable so when you're starting out and you're creating a blog site for the first time it is highly unlikely that you're going to have numerous other blog posts that you could populate within the section of the template now instead of just heading over and deleting this entire row which will then remove all of this content you may wish to re retain this for use at a later date once you have a multiple blog posts that you could then reference in this section of your template so what we'd want to do is we'd actually want to save this particular row for use at a later stage and you could come and reinsert it with minimal effort without losing any of the template functionality that has already been included so head over to a white space where you can see the blue outline is which indicates that the row will then be edited you'll see the row is now highlighted at the top over here it'll also indicate that it is the row that you're busy working on head over to the little camera in the right hand corner in here you can come and create a title for this particular block and what we will call it is pop popu how can i spell popular posts popular posts the next optional field here is do you want to create a master block the purpose of this is that if you create this as a master block it will reflect on all pages that make use of it so if you change that from popular posts to popular post then every page that makes use of this particular row would then reflect that as a change but because we want to use this at a later stage and we and our intention is to actually delete it for now we're not going to select that head over to the bottom right hand corner select create and once it has been created it will notify us that it has been has been done block has been created and if you wanted to confirm that it has been done just head just click off of that particular row head over to blocks my blocks and in there you'll see that that is the the row that we have just created called we called it popular posts we could then bring that and we could come and drag that in anywhere that we wanted to you can see that that solid blue line is that it will place it underneath blog content if i go and place it there you will now see that we have two of these that are available to us you can see that they have now been duplicated for now we're going to want to delete this row that we've just inserted it can be a little bit tricky to gain access to that row as you can see as you mouse over that particular text box i go and select delete i select ok then select delete on the text as well and you can see over here we get individual rows for all of the icons move around until you can remove the entire row there that'll take all those icons away and eventually you get to the point where you're able to then delete the entire row select ok and you'll see that a placeholder has been left here for that particular row i can then go and select that and delete it the same I now 
this was the original one that we actually wanted to delete. So I head over to that section instead of worrying just about trying to get a single row, go and select that, select OK, and you'll see that entire row has now been removed. So we've got our head, we've got our header at the at the top of our page, we've got our blog content where that will now appear, and now we've got our footer section. We could spend hours here editing each individual little item and I'm sure you will as you get to play around with your blog site. But for now that is all that we'll do on the on this particular template. We'll select save changes. Once that has been saved, which is fairly quick, we'll just head back to our to our blog site and we have completed our blog layout. So let's just head over to the pages section. Next let's go and edit the home page which is the default page of your blog site. It is listed here as home page. You can see that the URL is the actual domain name without anything afterwards. And you know, and if we wanted to go and edit that particular page, head over to the little magic wand, go and select edit, and it will open up the website editor that we are familiar with that we've seen now on the other template pages. Once again, you can see from our editing of the actual templates, you can see our header over here is picking up what we changed on the page layout and all the way down the bottom, it will pick up whatever you've changed on your actual templates. So from here, you can see that we've already removed our articles menu item is missing from this particular page. So over here, we can go and create our first lot of content for our home page. So if we want to go and change the background image of this particular row, we just select the row like we did previously and scroll down and you can see here is the image that is appearing in that space. We can go and remove it and you see that it is no longer there. And if you want to change that image, you select the little cloud. You can either copy photos from your computer and drag them over here, which will then upload them to system.io, or you can go through to your images and select one that you already have and go and select insert and that'll then place it into that particular space. And if you want to edit the text, because it's not legible due to the color on the background, you come and select, you can select the text. At the top here, you'll see that what you've selected is what you're going to be editing. In this case, it's going to be the text. And if you want to change all of the color of that text, highlight it all, and then select the color palette, and you can change it then to black or whatever color you then choose, which is going to make it legible, and then that will change the color of that text. So other, other settings that you can also change for this text box is you can increase the size of the text. As we move the slider along, the size of the, the text increases. Your other option is you can also, there's little up and down arrows where you can incrementally increase the size of the text. Scrolling down, you can also select the various fonts that you want. And as you scroll down, you can change line spacing, the color of the text on the background. If you, at this, at this point in time, the black on the white is fairly easy to see. If you wanted to just give a bit of, a little bit, add a little bit darker just to that background, you could then select something along the lines there and play around with the colors until you get something that actually pops out. Heading back to, that particular text box and scrolling down. You can also set your margin as to where that text box is gonna appear. So margin pretty much sets anything. If I select the text box over there, margin is anything on the outside of the text box that will, will determine its spacing and padding is anything on the inside of that particular line. So if I scroll down, again and we go to margin and we move it along we can see what we are busy doing is we increasing the space between that particular button and our text so if i move it back down you'll see it'll start to get closer to that particular button until it gets to whatever point that we're happy with it. If I head down to padding and I increase the top padding there, what you can see is although it has the same effect, but what you're actually doing is you're adding this amount of space at the top of the text box to when your text actually appears for the first time. So scrolling down, uh, padding, we will reduce that back down to zero. And as we continue down, we can change the alignment of our text. We can either center it, we can right align it or left align. You can delay 
how long it is before that text will appear. You can set a timer for that and you can determine whether that's going to appear on your desktop only or mobile or on both. Once you're happy with those particular settings, that is done. You can just select off of that and you can go and save your changes to that particular page. So let's say you wanted to add two columns underneath this section. Just come and drag it into that open space. You'd see there would be two columns and say we wanted to put text into the one. We just go and select our text block on the left hand menu. We drag it until that blue line is highlighted within that space. And we now have text that we can come and edit. So you can just highlight it and say hello and change that to to whatever messaging that you want to include in that text. And if you wanted to say on this side, head around and wanted to add say a photo of something, scroll down, you can come and select an image. And once again, drag it to when it's inside that particular block, select the image. And here you can on the little cloud on the image file, you can then select. And once again, you can either upload an image or you can scroll down and select a particular image that you want. And there's that image that I'm inserting into, into the page over here. Now you may also want to set up a pop-up for this particular page. You can head over here and select pop-up. If you haven't created any pop-ups -up, pop at this stage, you can then select add pop-up. And over here, you can create a headline that is suitable for your particular niche. And once again, here you can change the color of the text, you, the size of the font, etc. And here is the actual input field that you are going to be collecting the email address. Just select that. You can see the input type is going to be email. And over here we can, and then you'll see that that will be a placeholder in there, giving your, your viewers instruction on what what is expected for them to input over them head over to the button and here you can actually change the the text on that particular button come and double double select that this one we, you got a couple of options you can actually send the form which is which will submit the information basically that person's email you could show a pop-up you could open a url you could link to a specific blog or you could get them to download a file depending on what you want so for this particular instance we're going to want them to actually submit the form scroll down and we can go and edit the text on the button um, and we can change that to and if you keep scrolling down you could then get to the subtext section there you could put whatever you want in there or you could just delete it which will then remove it and if you wanted to edit that message at the bottom there um, and change it to whatever you wanted to that would also is also customizable and once you are done that is your pop-up that is then completed so what we want to do over here now is head over to pop-ups and we can come and view it, select the little eye that here's the one that we have just created and select edit pop-up settings. And here's your option to either switch it, the show a close button, which I think is better to have that little X on the, the top right hand court corner. Uh, and there are various settings that you can then set for this. So open the popped up pop-up naught days after the last time the pop-up was closed. So this just is how often that that pop-up will repeat itself and you can either change that set it to open up automatically and here you can actually set whether you want it to open on exit intent so as soon as someone moves off of the page as in they're heading for the x in the top corner top right hand corner then your pop-up is going to is going to appear all right, and then you can select it for a mobile device as well. And once again, you can configure how often you want to display that particular pop-up message. And you can go ahead and change whatever you want on this particular pop-up. And once you are done, you then select, you can then close the pop-up and it will be applied to your page. Head over and save your changes yet again and once that's done we can actually then go and select preview for our page as the page 
is busy building, you can see there's the content and based upon our settings, we've now got the pop-up that is appearing. Yeah, you can see that our image has been updated as well as the color of our text. Our row with the two additional columns has been inserted with our text and our... You can then revert back to the editor. You can just close that window out and you could go and make whatever other changes you wish to this particular page. Once you're done with all of your changes, you can then exit out of the page. It'll take you back to your blog site settings. And once again, if we just go back over to the page settings for this particular page, you can see here is our blog page name. You could change that to anything that you wanted as well if you didn't want to have it displayed as home page. And next, what I would suggest is that you would then come and edit your about page, come and edit your contact page, any of those that we've still got on our on your home menu, make sure that those are then configured and those will be your pages that would be done. If you wanna head over to posts on the left-hand side, you would head over here and you once again, you would come and do the exact same thing as what we've done on the other pages. It has a similar layout and as to that of the pages, the little wand, you'll be able to come and edit the actual layout of that and the content of that particular page. So if I go and select that and it will then open up the editor containing our content. Here you can come and edit the page, the date, whatever category that you want to assign this to, go and edit the images, etc. It all works exactly the same. Once you're done, don't forget to save your changes and then you can head back to, to your blog posts and you could continue your editing or creating your next post. So if you want to create a new one from scratch, it'll have your template in there. That is fine. You just go and select create a blog post. But if you're going to edit the ones that are on here, you just go and select edit. If you wish to deactivate the post, you just come and select this particular button over here to deactivate it. You can then select, you're going to confirm the deactivation of that blog post. It'll do it'll do that and it'll also give you an indication here that it is no longer has the the tick that it's published it's now got an exclamation mark to indicate that it that it isn't if you want to go and activate it again now you can see that you have the option just to publish it go and select it confirm that you wish to publish that particular blog post and you'll see that the yellow exclamation mark there now changes back to the green tick you have the ability to also delete posts. If you want to delete the whole one completely, you could also go and duplicate a particular post. If there were for whatever reason that you wanted to do so, you could go and do that. One other thing that I wanted to show you. So once you've headed back into your actual post, if you head over to settings, here there are specific settings that are pertinent to this particular blog post. Here you can enter your meta description, which will be used for SEO purposes with all of your search engines so the likes of google bing etc and you would enter a i think it's 156 character description enter that in there any keywords that you wish this page to rank for um, you can enter inf information about the author the social image so this is the one where i mentioned earlier when we looked at our blog post layout there was an an, an image placeholder that was in the template if you come and insert an image over in this section then that image will appear between your headline and your category and the actual content of your page so if we scroll over here will appear in this section of your blog post so we head back to settings and by default system.io hides your blog posts from search engines i'm not sure why that is the case just go and deselect that because you want your blog posts to be searchable and appear on search engines go and select that and if you need to enter any facebook pixels or google analytics code then you'll enter those at the edit header code and you would just come and copy and paste those particular codes into your into the section of your page make the changes go and select save and then too easy it is it, that has been done so once again head over to the right hand side go and select save your changes and then once those have been ch changes have been made you can head back to your list of posts and you can continue working either creating your new post or moving on to editing the next post that is available to you now if you want to test your site and see that it has gone live we head back over to our page and we'll start off on our home page and you actually want to view the page come and select the little tab over here and our page will we can close that 
And that's how easy it is to create a blog post from scratch for free without the need of having to go secure hosting for your website, purchasing a theme for a WordPress site, or going and securing any specific plugins that are required to get a WordPress site up and running. It is as simple as that. If you would like to learn more about creating online business assets, then be sure to have a look at the links that I have included below in the description. And in addition to that, if you got some value out of today's video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that all important notification bell to make sure that you get notified every time I release a new video. So until the next time, have a great day.